So today we're going to learn a new integration technique, and it's called integration by parts. And what it really comes from is the product rule for derivatives. So if we take the derivative with respect to x of two things being multiplied together like u and v, then it's the derivative of the first thing, so the derivative of u with respect to x times the second, so v, and then plus the first times the derivative of the second, so dv over dx. Now I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this. So this v, I'm going to switch spots with the v and the du over dx. So I'm going to use it like this, v times du over dx plus u times dv over dx. All right. And so what we want to do is, is to get an integral out of this, because this is an integration technique, is we're going to integrate both sides of this equation. Okay. So that becomes the integral of d dx of u times v with respect to dx, okay? And then this side becomes the integral of, and this is going to be in parentheses, so it's going to be v times du over dx plus u times dv over dx. And again, we're integrating both sides with respect to x, so we're going to have that. Okay, so this dx down here and this dx undo each other, and we're also taking the, the integral, right? So they're going to undo each other, and what we're going to be left with on this side is just simply u times v. Because remember, an integral will undo this derivative. So this is just u times v is equal to and then what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to separate this because I have a sum of two things. I'm going to, in, um, properties of integrals says you can break that up, um, but I'm going to integrate both these with respect to x. So this becomes the integral of v du over dx with respect to x, so times dx, and then plus the integral of u dv over dx times dx. That's just breaking this again up into two separate integrals. Now here, my dx's cancel out. And over here, my dx's cancel out. And so I'm left with u times v is equal to the integral of v times du plus the integral of u. And here, my dx's. And so here, I'm left with d v. So I'm left with these two integrals. All right. So then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this integral and move it to the other side. So I have uv is uh, minus the integral of v du is equal to the integral of u dv. And so what this is, is, is a product, but this, notice, this is u and this is dv, right? They're two different things. So this is, we're going to use this when we need to take an integral of a product, and it didn't come from the chain rule like we would need to use for substitution. Like, when we use substitution, it's because that what we're looking at came from the chain rule. Here, when we look at this technique, it's really going to come from a product of two things, okay? So here this integral of u times dv is equal to, I'm just switching the sides of the equals, is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. And so one way, one way to remember this, okay, an easy way to remember this is uv, right? That's uv stands for ultraviolet. So we, way I tell people, we call this ultraviolet. And VDU, we say ultraviolet voodoo. Okay. So we use ultraviolet voodoo when we have a product and it didn't come from the chain rule. Okay. All right. So how do you pick? Because we're going to need to pick what U is because we're going to see a product. We're going to need to know, okay, what do, we let, what do we let U be and what do we let DV be? Okay. So here's some, a little bit of guidelines, okay? So we're going to pick, and let me slide this up a little bit. We're going to pick 
U so that DU is simpler. So we want to pick the U so that when we take the derivative, it's going to be something that's simpler. So that DU is simpler. And because we're getting DV, we need DV to be something that's easy to integrate. So and DV is something that is easy to integrate. All right, so a little mnemonic device to help us remember or help us to decide what to pick, it's called Lipit, okay? So this is guidelines on how to pick you. So if we see a logarithm function right off the top, okay, we want that to be our U. If it's an inverse function, but not a logarithm function, then we go to inverse function. And this is just a higher order. So we want to do the logarithms first. If we have any logarithms, we want that to be U. And if we don't have that, then we want U to be inverse trig functions. If we don't have that, then we want U to be the polynomial. If we don't have that, then we want U to be the exponential function. And finally, if U is, if U is not a logarithm or an inverse trig function or a polynomial or an exponential, then we let U be a trig function, okay? So you'll be a trig function, all right? So LIPET, L-I-P-E-T, L stands for logarithms, I stands for inverse trig functions, P is polynomials, E is exponential functions, and T is trig functions, all right? So here we go. First problem is, okay, what's the integral of X times cosine X dx? All right, so so we can't let either, we can't use integration by substitution, all right, because we don't have the u value, right? Okay, we don't have the u and the du and all that. Okay, so what else could we have here? All right, so going by Lipit, we have a product here. So you're going to do this when you have a product, all right, and you can't use integration by substitution; it just doesn't work. All right, so we go through Lipit. So logarithms, we don't have that. Then inverse trig functions, we don't have an inverse trig functions. And then the P in Lipit stands for polynomial. Well, we have a polynomial right here, X. So that's our polynomial here, okay? And so we're gonna let U equal X. And then DU, the derivative with respect to X, okay, would just be one DX. So then what's left over has to be my dv, okay? So dv would equal cosine of x, whoops, and then dx, okay? And then we want dv to be something that we can integrate easily, right? So what's the integral of, of cosine of x? Well, the derivative of sine x is cosine x, so the integral of cosine x is sine x. So that means v is simply sine x. Okay, so what we have here is we're going to start, we have the integral of x cosine x dx, and I'm going to grab a couple colors to, to kind of color code this to help us see it, okay? So my x right here is my u, and the cosine x dx is my dv And this is going to equal, remember, ultraviolet voodoo. So ultraviolet. So what is ultraviolet? UV, right? So it's going to be U times V. So that'd be X um, times sine X. I almost wrote cosine X. All right. And then minus the integral, okay? And ultra, that's the, this is my ultra right here, my ultra. And this is my violet, okay? And so we're going to minus, so ultraviolet voodoo, right? Voodoo stands for VDU. So this would be sine X DX. So the sine X is my V. So there's my VU. And my DX is my, my DU, okay? So 
that makes this x sine x minus, and then the integral of sine x is negative cosine x. So this would be minus and then negative cosine of x, and then plus some constant c. Because remember, this is indefinite integral, so we need to add in that constant. So we're subtracting um, a negative value, so that's actually going to become addition. So the final answer to this would be x sine x plus cosine of x plus some constant c. And that's, our, that's the integral of x cosine x dx. All right, next problem. All right, so for this next problem, we have the integral of x squared e to the x dx. So we follow our guidelines, lip it, right? Logarithms, we don't have that. Um, I is inverse trig functions. We don't have any inverse trig functions in this problem. Um, P is polynomials. We do have a polynomial, right? So it's x squared. So we're going to let u equal x squared, okay? And then du would be the derivative of that, which would be 2x dx. And so we're going to let dv be everything else. So dv will equal e to the x dx, and that's easy to integrate, right? So we want to pick dv, so it's easy to integrate. So v, the integral of e dx, can't be anything easier than that. The integral of e dx is e to the x. All right, so back over here, the integral of x squared e to the x dx is equal to, all right, and this, so this is my the x squared is my u, and the e to the x dx is my dv. And so this is equal to u times v, so u times v, which is x squared e to the x, minus the integral, okay? And remember, this is my u, and this is my v ultraviolet, minus voodoo, right? And what's voodoo? Voodoo is e to the x times 2x dx. Now I'm going to write the 2x first, okay? Or yeah, I take that back. Let's write voodoo, okay? So this is e to the x times 2x dx. Okay, so that is not going to be something that's easily, like there's a problem here, right? We still have the product. So because we still have the product, and this is my v and this is my du okay we're gonna have to apply this we're gonna have to apply integration by parts one more time on this integral okay so now you look at this okay let's go through lipid again so sometimes you have to do integration by parts more than once so here all right we go by lipid well we don't have any logarithms we don't have any inverse trig functions we do have a polynomial so this time for this integral, because we're going to have to evaluate this integral, um, our u is going to be this polynomial, 2x. And then du would be 2. All right. And dv is once again e to the x dx. And then v, the well, the integral of that would just be e to the x. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this. This means this integral, the integral of x squared e to the x dx is equal to, so it's going to be this, so x squared e to the x minus, and then I'm going to do a bracket, and what goes into the bracket is the integral of this, which is ultra um, violet voodoo, okay, because we have to do this one, right, but it's going to, we're going to be using v's for our ultraviolet voodoo. Okay, so ultraviolet, so that's going to be the 2 to the x, or not 2 to the x, 2x times v, which is e to the x. So 2x times e to the x minus the integral of voodoo, right? So that'd be 2, um, you know what? And I forgot to put a dx here. Sorry about that. Because we need the dx to integrate. So voodoo, right? That's going to be e to the x times 2 dx. And I'm going to close the bracket. Okay, so this is equivalent to x squared e to the x minus 2x 
e to the x because I'm subtracting this and I'm multiplying, I'm distributing this subtraction, okay? So this becomes plus the integral of two e to the x dx. Well, this constant can be pulled out. So we have x squared e to the x minus two x e to the x plus two times the integral of e to the x dx. And now this integral is easy. It's just e to the x. So this becomes x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x plus 2 e to the x plus some constant c. And that's our answer to this one. Okay. So sometimes, you know, especially, especially when you have polynomials involved, when you use a polynomial, all right, every time, every time we take the derivative, it goes down by a power. So we're going to have to do, we're going to have to take integrals until it gets down to a constant. So that's what's happening here is, okay, so here we went from x squared to 2x, and then we went from 2x to 2, so we had to do it twice, okay? And there's a thing that I'm gonna show you in the next couple of days, and it's called tabular integration. That's kind of a shortcut to doing this, okay? But it, remember, it's ultraviolet voodoo. That's how you remember the uv minus integral of v du is ultraviolet voodoo, all right? Somebody share that with me so it's not, it's not something I came up with, all right? All right, let's do another problem. So in this case, we have a differential equation with an initial condition. And so what we're, we wanna come up with is what's the equation that if we take the derivative would give us a derivative of x times natural log of x, all right? So we've done this with integration by substitution, but now we can also do it with integration by parts. So what we wanna first do is separate the variables so this dy over dx becomes dy is equal to x ln of x and then times dx. So what we did here is I took both sides and multiplied by dx. And now to get what y is, we're going to integrate both sides. So we're integrate the left side and we're going to integrate the right-hand side. And so the integral of dy turns out to be y equals, okay, so right here, this is again a product, so that's a candidate, like where it's either one of these is u and the, and we're multiplying by du, which is the chain rule, right, um, which we'd have to use integration by substitution, but we don't have that here, okay, so the other, the other technique that we have is integration by parts. So what do you let u be? Well, you go through Lippet, right? Lippet, the L stands for logarithms. We have a logarithm. That's what we're gonna want to let u be, okay? So in this case, we're gonna let u equal ln of x. So this right here is gonna be my u. And so the x along with the dx is gonna be my dv. And so dv is x dx. Okay, so what's du? Well, what's the derivative of ln of x? Well, du is 1 over x times dx. Okay, so what's the integral of dv? Well, this would be x squared over 2. So v would be x squared over 2. Okay, so now back to this ultraviolet voodoo, right? So ultraviolet, so ln of x times x squared over 2. So ln of x times x squared over 2 minus the integral of voodoo, right? And voodoo would be x squared over 2 times 1 over x dx. So I'm going to rewrite this so the x squared over 2 is first. So this become, becomes y is equal to x squared over 2 times ln of x minus the integral. And this becomes 1 half x dx. Well, this 1 half can come out. Now it's just going to be a regular integration problem, right? So y is equal to 
x squared over two times ln of x minus one half the integral of x dx. So we're gonna have to add one to the power and divide by that new power, right? So y is equal to x squared over two ln of x minus one half times, and this is gonna become x squared over two and then plus some c, right? So cleaning this up, this becomes y is equal to x squared over two, ln of x minus, this becomes x squared over four, plus some c. Okay, so now, now we have to figure out, okay, what's the c? What's the constant, right? And we can figure that out by plugging in our initial condition because we know um, that x equals one if y equals negative one, right? We're gonna use using our initial condition to find C. Initial condition. Okay, so we're gonna put one in for negative one, or one in for negative one, <laughs> negative one in for Y, sorry about that. And then this is gonna be one squared over two, ln of, one because x is one minus one squared over four plus c okay so this becomes negative one is equal to one half times natural log of one but the natural log of one is is zero so this is just going to be zero minus one fourth plus c and let me slide this up so we can see it Okay, so then the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna add one fourth to both sides. So this becomes negative one plus one fourth is equal to C. So this would be negative four fourths plus one fourth is equal to C. And so that gives you negative three fourths is equal to C. So our equation would be Y is equal to back up to this one right here, y is equal to x squared over two, ln of x minus x squared over four, and then plus c, but c is negative, so that's gonna, we're gonna write this as minus three fourths. And that's the function that gave this to us, okay? Now, this quest, particular question didn't ask for this, but if we talk about the domain, right? What's the domain? And you remember, it's, it's, you look at the restrictions of the actual function. So in this case, there's a restriction because ln of x, x has to be positive, all right? If you look at the differential equation at the very beginning, my dy over dx, it also has an ln of x. I can't move these, I'm trying to move the papers. Okay, so back up here, there's a restriction here, x has to be greater than zero. So together with either one of those, right, we can't just plug any old x in here we have to have x that's greater than zero or x, the domain would have to be zero to infinity. So there's my answer. This is the equation. This is its domain, all right? Because sometimes, you know, they'll ask you, what's the domain of this, um, of this um, um, function that gave us the, the differential equation, okay? All right. That's it, guys. That's integration by parts in a nutshell. Um, you remember you, a couple things you need to remember, ultraviolet voodoo, and then also lipid. Okay, so let me go back to that first page that we did. And so we got to remember ultraviolet voodoo to remember what this is, what the integral of UDV is equal to. That helps. That helps me. All right. And then how do you pick your U, right? So the biggest thing is to, to pick your U um, is use this idea of lipid, okay? Um, and then you go through logarithms and inverse trig functions, polynomials. It's just the hierarchy of what do you pick first to be you, okay? All right, guys, so good luck. Thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit and I'll see you tomorrow.